I am Marcus Blake with Fat Nerd Show. We're here at the 2017 no, great, Earth yeah. Texas Film Colorado. Festival, and we are here yeah, with Lavani and Louie talking about the movie Racing Extinction. And I mean, we've got to talk about this film. So, I mean, you've hit kind of a general area about extinction on, on Earth. Um, tell us a little bit about this film. Um, well, I was honored to participate in it. I got to drive the very cool sort of James Bond version of a Tesla Model S in the film. And this is for nerds. This is this car is for nerds. Oh yeah. So I should go into the car. Yeah. Okay. So it's not it's not your standard Tesla Model S. It has a 15,000 lumen projection system that comes out of the back of the car. Oh wow. Um, so we can project very powerful images that are several hundred feet high from like a thousand feet away. Um, we've got a high definition clear camera on the front of the Tesla that um, comes out of the front area, the front trunk, and that has a very special color filter on it that helps make carbon dioxide and methane visible to the human eye. Um, I've also got a disappearing license plate so I can flip a switch and the license plate will go blank. And um, last but not least, it's the first car in the world with, bio, uh, with electroluminescent paint, which is meant to sort of mimic bioluminescent creatures in the ocean, so we're raising awareness about you know, climate change, the human impact on the planet, uh, ocean acidification, and of course uh, animals in the ocean are severely affected by uh, the change in pH. And uh, so it's a beautiful, beautiful car, and I had the honor of driving it in the film. Was but it hard giving it back? Uh, it was difficult, yeah. I would still be driving it today if I could, but luckily I have, I, I do have my own personal Tesla, so I'm still driving a Tesla. It's just, it doesn't have any of the gadgets on it. <laughs> nice. Is it a lightsaber? Yes, uh, that's how we, that's how you know you're with that nerd show. We have a lightsaber microphone. Oh, no, no, no. All right. So in talking about racing, uh, I know. <laughs> Um, what, do you, what, in your perspective, what is the biggest problem that we face on this planet? Well, there's been five major extinctions in the history of the planet. We're going through a sixth one right now, but it's caused by us. Uh, unfortunately, it's not just one big problem, but if I had to try to solve one, it would be uh, limiting the amount of carbon dioxide that we do. And it's not just about driving Teslas or you know, electric cars. It's, it's really the, 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 what the single most impactful thing a person can do is reduce meat consumption. Because the, the raising of meat for human consumption creates more greenhouse gases than the entire transportation sector. So if you want to save the planet, you can do, work on it three times a day by reducing or eliminating meat. We're both plant-based you know, vegans. So I have trouble saying that. I know. Yeah, because it's almost like a dirty word, but I think I, I'm, I'm doing a film right now, executive produced by James Cameron, and it's about uh, super athletes that are, that are plant-based. They're the world's strongest guys in the uh, Two of the top ten boxers are vegans. So the most accomplished ultra runner, both male and female, are vegans. The Williams sisters are vegan. Tom Brady has a, a vegetarian food line. So people are starting to come out with the, the idea that you need to eat meat for the protein is like the most dangerous myth in the world. Right. So that's what we're trying to, you know, had a lot of people say, what's the one thing I can do? To, uh, Get rid of the animals in your product. It's better, so for, the, it's better for the animals, it's better for your health, and it's better for the planet. So I just raced Daytona in a vegan-themed race car. Um, it was called the Vegan Powered Race Car, and we gave away free vegan food to thousands of NASCAR fans at Daytona. And we haven't announced it yet, but we're going to announce it tomorrow um, that that car will be returning to the track next month. And we had thousands of, of race fans that were just completely blown away by how good the food was. You know, obviously I came in and we fed them vegan chicken wings and vegan meatballs and, and you know, things that they would normally find at the racetrack. I didn't come in with like kale and quinoa. And, you know, they were completely shocked that they were not eating meat. And in fact, my whole race team went vegan for the race weekend. And uh, when that announcement was made, one of my crew guys that changes the tires on my car came into the my race car hauler where our food is for the race team, and he's eating one of the chicken tenders, and he looks at the lady who cooks our food, and he says, so where's the vegan food? And he's eating the chicken. 
She's yeah, I mean, pointing at it. She's like, you're already eating it. He could not believe that it was not are you, meat. Are you trying to tell everybody that, I mean, eating any kind of meat is bad and that is important? So, well, it's, it's, it's bad for the animal that you're eating. And, so, <laughs> and quite seriously, it's, uh, it's the one thing that you can do that's going to make you not a man is by eating meat. Because it's going to, it's 70% of the diseases that we have are caused by putting animal products in body. Stroke, heart disease, erectile dysfunction, all primarily caused by eating. Uh, of meat, so you know, what you think is making you strong and manly is actually doing the opposite. It's kind of a win win win. Like, not only for the planet is it a much more environmentally friendly uh, diet to have, but it's obviously for the billions of animals that we slaughter every year and also for your own health. So, it's a win for your health, the planet, animals. I, I haven't heard anybody with like a legitimate argument for why we should continue eating meat when we can have all the flavors and it's all plant all, all protein comes from plants. So, yeah, are you, you're, so you're just mugging the animal to get the protein. It sounds like you're creating a lot of controversy there. But, but that project you, has there been uh, well, the truth is usually controversial. But it, so it is, I mean, like, it's controversial to say that cigarettes are uh, harmful to your health. And it took you know, three years ago, 35 years to get them off the plane. But now they are. So it's, it'll be the same way. Soon, soon I think you're going to have to get your chicken wings you know, like out back and with the, the smokers. Okay. I mean, we had 10,000 race fans come through my tent at Daytona in February. I didn't have a single negative reaction. It wasn't just me. I also had um, a guy that's called the 300-pound vegan. His name's David Carter. He's a vegan NFL player. Um, so we were both giving out the, the food samples together. Well, that's good. Um, it sounds like it's an interesting film that everybody should watch it, despite what your perspective is on me. All right, I am Marcus Blake with That Nerd Show. We're here at the 2017 Earth Texas Film Festival, and we are here with Chip and James from the movie our film Racing Extinction. So, how did you guys come to this project? Well, I um, I came into the project when I uh, met Trammell Crow and uh, thought that uh, he should take a look at this and so introduced him to Louie, the producer, and um, you know, we all started to make sure that the film happened and was completed and got And I'm on the board of the OCA Organic Preservation Society. Louis, the executive director that produced the movie. Now, I mean, we've been talking about you know, there's so many problems. You know, like Louis said, that we're facing a sixth you know, extinction here, and it's basically caused by man. Uh, but he was talking a little bit about uh, you know, plant-based meat and stuff like that. What did did you guys know much about this before the project started? I mean. Tell us a little about what you learned after it was all done. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you something. I've seen that film probably 30 times, but I've watched it once, and every single time I learned something new from it. That's how much is in there. I mean, you've got deep time, uh, you know, tutorial, uh, paleontological history of our planet, uh, composition of the ocean, the state of our species. Um, it's, it's an incredible educational platform. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just something that I can't recommend enough for, I mean, literally for the science class for kids. <laughs> Next year one of the there's so many things that the movie touches on, but one of them that is surprising to many people is that the beef industry is actually worse for the environment than transportation. All the cars combined. So just cutting down on the amount of red meat that one eats can be incredibly beneficial for the environment, which and I did not realize that. I know, I know. I, yeah. and, and, and I find it interesting that you, you're saying that in Texas, too. It's true, and I'm <laughs> from Fort Worth. <laughs> um, do you feel like that this is a film that should be required for any kind of science course in school, college? I actually think it should be more targeted toward lower school and middle school. Um, my children, who are very young, you know, kind of 10, 11 years old, absolutely loved it. Um, there's a wonderful lesson plan that was put together through our partnership with a group called Vulcan that's interactive, online, where the children in science, kind of fifth, sixth, seventh grade science, will watch the movie and do like a week-long lesson plan on it. So it's surprisingly for a younger audience than most people would think. Now, some would argue that it's kind of too late, you know, we've already screwed this up enough, but do you feel like that this film and lesson plan 
but there's still a lot that we can change and make our world better. I think the Earth is five billion years old, and that we've got time to um, to make a change, and I think we're doing it. I'm, I'm actually pretty optimistic. Tell us a little bit about the uh, institute that you're on the board for. I don't think most people actually know what that is. Yeah, so it's the Oceanic Preservation Society, and it is the 501c3 where these movies come from. So the Cove um, was the first the Academy Award winning documentary on the dolphins in Taiji, Japan, and then now Racing Extinction. So that is the entity that creates these movies, and so I'm, it's a small board, and I'm going to do it. What are you, what are your future plans with this film? I mean, it, is it premiering any other festivals, or? Well, uh, you know, it, it was released uh, at the end of 2015, so right. now it's been out for about a year and a half, and it's, run, it's running through its, its distribution cycles, but we'll show it again. We've shown it already uh, up at the R-Day. Uh, summit in Aspen. Uh, so I'm the chairman of the American Renewable Energy Institute and we produce this summit and as a part of that we have a program called Impact Film and uh, you know this is the type of film that you can show every year and people will always get value and benefit out of it. It's that deep and educational experience. Now one last question before they rush you off but with everything that we keep learning because science is ongoing now, do you feel like that there's a sequel that can come out of this or even for, or even maybe a series well I'll just respond to that by saying that uh, we, I went to Abu Dhabi in January and we started working on a new project called Now and Now is a film envisioned to pick up where uh, all of these others leave off I'm not. I'm gonna set racing extinction aside and put it like above that category of, of inconvenient truth and before the flood and, and some of these others. Uh, but now is about okay. We've seen all those films. What do we do now? And that's and that's really delving into the psychology of how it is that humans choose to get their primary energy from oil, coal, and gas when we have the sun and the wind which is, costs us nothing, and it emits no uh, throughput to the atmosphere. And so, um, there's a lot of sequels. Louis working on a new film called Game Changers, with, uh, it's about the vegan issue that my colleague here just mentioned. Um, you know, it turns out that the way that we raise animals, right. um, you know, and, and how we eat meat, it accounts for more than the entire transportation sector of the entire planet. Right. You know, in terms of uh, the carbon and the methane. So, well, um, that's, we definitely look forward to seeing more of what you guys uh, come up with, because uh, it's sparking an ongoing conversation. And for our science geeks over here, <laughs> we have a si we have a little bit of a science staff at that uh, nerd show, so we definitely enjoy that. Thank you very much for being with us. Good luck. Thank you.